for any second. There we are. We are live. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are live here with Park. So um, welcome. Thanks for being here, folks, you friends who are early. Welcome, welcome. Um, I like to riff. I like to start with a little check-in question. We're, we're still early. So I'm going to type this at the top. But um, check-in question. I'm going to write this at the top. Check-in question. What are you grateful for today? Maybe we can do this together, Park. What's something that you're grateful for today? And I'm answering this. Yeah. What do you What do you think? We're live, so what do you think? I'm grateful to have a chance to catch up with you. It's been a while, and I've always enjoyed talking with you and learning from you. So I'm this you know this was a unexpected question. So it's it's a genuine answer. <laughs> That's my favorite kind. We're getting some cool folks filling up the chat book. We got some folks saying sunshine and health. We got hot tea. I'm grateful for technology that allows us to connect with however many folks, you know, will be joining us today. Um, yeah, I'm grateful for you. I mean, I, I feel the same way. I, I feel now I don't just feel the the sort of <laughs> polite compulsion to like bounce the ball back. But as you said that, I felt more present to my own gratitude because when we checked in earlier today, I was like, oh yeah, there's a way that we know each other. You know, I wouldn't say that we were like super close friends, but as acquaintances, there's a way that I missed you. <laughs> and so I felt that way today. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, it's great to see you. Well, thanks y'all for joining. It's, um, it's going to be, this is going to be fun where this is park. And I are talking about some of the things we like, like we like to talk about the most and, Park has certainly spent a lot of time talking about these things um, just to do the kind of the brief intro. Uh, the This is not going to be your classic intro, but Park, the man sitting in front of you, has spent 28 years in the, well, spent 28 years in the Office of Admissions at UVA uh, in Virginia. Uh, he's served as Associate Dean, Director of International Admission. He oversaw the selection into the Honors Program, still serves as an advisor for the Jefferson Scholars Program and the Ron Brown Program. And uh, he's written over 3,000 pages on his blog, mostly on education, admission, and essays. All of that content is free. We'll make sure to follow up with links so you can check out more of his stuff. He's been a top writer on Quora for four years. And um, he's been talking about this stuff longer than I have. You have much more experience than I do. I think it's something like we, we did a podcast where it was 10,000 essays, but I think it's probably more like 20,000. Would you say that's true? Yeah, that's definitely true. So and you've, you've already said in a very nice way, because you're so much older than I am, you have more experience, but yeah. I'm glad you got that. That's right. The euphemism is like, Park is much more experienced than I <laughs> Well, let's jump right in. So Park, in your view, what is it that makes a personal statement great? So in some ways, that's a question I, I, I grapple with, because what makes a great for one person or one reader may not be exactly the same for someone else. And so let me talk a little bit about the search for voice, mm -hmm. because there are so many people that give as their first piece of advice for essays is find your personal voice. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. while that's not a terrible piece of advice, I think it's inaccurate mm -hmm. because we all have voices. Mm -hmm. The voices I have with you is not the same voice I have with my family, yeah. is not the same voice I have with a student, yeah. is not the same voice I have with when I'm watching politics on TV and yell, yell at the TV. <laughs> I mean, it's we all have different voices. Part of the process is just finding out which voice do I want to tap into for this particular assignment. Yeah, I love, I'm just preach. I mean, and it's such a problematic thing because when we tell a student, hey, do it in your voice, what does that even mean? And I love what you're saying, that there are many different voices that we could have and there's no right voice is kind of what I'm getting you're saying. Yeah, great. Yeah, what else? Because yeah. a lot of people get really nervous. You know, what's my voice? Oh my God, I've got to find it. Where did I put it? Um, right. And so that that's one thing. The next would be, this goes back to a Buddhist Cohen, you know, there's a monk up at the top of a mountain. There are two novices. It's a windy day. The first young monk comes up and says, the trees move. Old guy says nothing. He slinks away. Next one comes up and says, the wind moves. And 
guy says nothing. He slinks away. And then he looks at them and he says, the mind moves. Ooh. And it's a very famous poem yeah. in mm -hmm. Asia. And that's what that's what writing is, is first of all, you seeing your own mind move and then sharing that with other people to get to see your mind move. Right. Right. Is, is that too? It's so good. It's so good. I'm thinking of an Emerson biography that I read in college called The Mind on Fire. And it's a little, it's a different nature metaphor, but it's that sense of like, I've always described it to students as like, what it's a sense of becoming. It's like, who are you? What is your... I call it like a you know your 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 status update you know who are you about to become what do you what do you know what do you know what are you beginning to know about yourself yeah keep keep going what else you got this is great um i guess again i'm stealing good well no as t.s Eliot once said good artists steal others yeah. borrow so i just yeah. steal it so Another poet said, you find the universal in the particular. Mm -hmm. And what that basically means is people want to start out with abstractions mm -hmm. and demonstrate an abstraction. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you've you got to turn that around. You've got to start in the particular and give us something absolutely particular. Yeah. You know, I could talk about the change in the shade of your beard since the last time I talked with you. Yeah. And, you know, that's a, that's a specific detail. You know, the last time it was this and then, and then all of a sudden, who knows if I'm going to use that in my essay, but I, it's an absolute detail yeah. that grounds me into the moment. Yeah. It's funny you mentioned Elliot because that essence objects exercise that I love to, to work with that I'll mention again at the end, if folks don't know what I'm talking about, um, is, you know, T.S. Eliot said that we find objects, we need objective correlatives, that the only way to express emotion in art is through an objective correlative. So it's an object that we correlate certain meaning to, right? Emotions, other references and stuff. And he was so great about that in his work. So yeah, I'm resonating with that as well. Um, let, me, let, let me give a couple um, things that I find to be great, you know, when I think about a great essay. my sort of go-to paradigms. I've got two. One is, um, you know, I think a boring essay, you know, will often choose a common topic, make what I call common connections, which is to say, say the things that we expect you to say about that topic, and then, you know, common language. So we've read the, you know, mission trip essay that says, I, you know, I'm so grateful for my experiences. You know, I learned so much that I have to be, you know, grateful for. I recognize my own privilege or the basketball essay that's on discipline, hard work, perseverance. So these, what we term cliches are just things that we've heard before. And so more interesting essays find an uncommon topic when possible. And we'll look at a couple today, uh, an uncommon, make uncommon connections, which in other words, they say some things that we didn't expect them to say. And they use in many cases, uncommon language. And sometimes the sort of the details that you're talking about will pop out in such a way that really surprises or arrests, arrests our attention. The other th qualities that I look for in a, in a great essay are, and you, you've heard me say this a bunch before, Park, but like these, these values, you know, can I point to the values that are important to the student? Can I read the essay and go, this is important, this is important, this is, what are your core values? Second, I'm looking for insight, and this is connected to the uncommon connections. Are you saying some things that uh, might surprise me? Uh, in other words, in terms of the content, and again, I'll show some examples in a little bit, uh, in terms of vulnerability and vulnerability can look like a lot of different things but is the personal statement actually personal <laughs> or you know does it reside sort of you know in sort of this intellectual realm sometimes intellectual essays can be personal but is there some element of me getting a sense to get to know who you are as a human what it's like to be in your to see the world through your eyes and then craft and craft is oftentimes that language that you're talking about universal in the particular you know you talk about sentences and sense you can if you want to say more about that but that sort of is, did the, did the student spend some time really revising this? So core values, insight, vulnerability, and craft. Say, will you say just a little bit about sentences and sense? So, you know, we don't start out with grammar. We have to learn it. And unfortunately, it's a lost art. Yeah. But 
understanding how something works lets you able <laughs> to use it more effectively you right. know if you know how a car engine works you're better off if you go off to the side of the road than if you don't mm -hmm. if if you don't know the basic structures and i i just find we communicate at the level of the sentence not the individual word and that means you have to have an idea well what is a sentence hey that's a sentence you know, it's not a common sentence, but it is a sentence. And you have to be able to understand how to use the tools to be able to use them most effectively. So people that start out thinking essay, that's long. That's 650 words. What I'm thinking out is start out with a sentence mm -hmm. and then play with it. You know, have fun with sentences because it's at the level of the sentence that you reach consciousness. This is not, this is neurobiology. This is not me just yapping away. Right. Right. Let's, and by the way, folks are wondering, are these guys going to do Q and a? Yes. We're going to do Q and a save questions in about 35 minutes. We're going to jump into some questions. We'll take them all. Let's give some folks some examples. So, so that they have get some sense of what what the heck we're talking about, because otherwise this could kind of live in abstraction. So I'd love it if Park, if you talk sort of generally about some of the essays that you've liked, and then Park and I have each picked an essay that we like. I'm going to read each of those loud, and we're going to say a little bit about what we like about them. But just walk through what are some of the essays that that have you know ticked the boxes for you, and that you felt maybe made some kind of difference in the application. Well, essays that aren't starting out with the question, how am I going to impress them? Mm -hmm. Because in some ways you're trying to come up with a really wild and interesting plot. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, most of us don't have that. I right. mean, most of us are living our lives maybe inside and under COVID, but <laughs> in some ways it's less exciting than it ever was. Mm -hmm. And but people think it's got to be a big major motion picture and i say it's not you've got you know you have about a minute that's how long it takes to read 650 words so you're you know you should be doing a mini like a commercial right. but you're not selling anything you're not selling yourself you are presenting a work that represents reflex whatever word you want to choose who you are as a person and some people they're really funny i mean because most essays tend to follow the what i call apocalypse now scenario you know they're going to tell you the worst thing that ever happened right. and hope that that moves you right and when a lot of people do the same thing sometimes you don't get his move. Mm -hmm. Whereas something small, again, this universal in the particular, if you can describe it in detail, mm -hmm. loving detail, you know, driving these streets with Susan is like tracing monastery rooms on a road map. Holy cow. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not gonna, you're not just gonna go over that and say, what was that? It's like, Wait a minute. <laughs> Not, mm -hmm. um, so the idea of a hook, I think hooks now are pretty common, but they still work. What are some of your, give me some of your, just if, if you can think of some, what are some of your favorite hooks or openings or before we get into the specific, this one specific example, some other essays that have really stayed with you over the years, just, or even topics? Well, the, the sentence I just read was a good hook. Yeah. Um, I sat in the back of the police car. Mm -hmm. You're not going to stop <laughs> reading there. <laughs> right. Um, and it turned out it's playing with our expectations. Oh, wow. They committed a felony or something. And it isn't any of that, but it got yeah. our attention. Yeah. Uh, the woman wanted breasts. Now mm -hmm. that's a big risk. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's, um, the guy that wrote that is now a literature professor at a very well-known university. Mm -hmm. um, he plays, they're playing with these expectations that, right. you know, this is going to, this is so off the charts or um, my guidance counselor told me I had to sell myself through my essay. 
Okay, I said, for sale, Simsbury student, used but in excellent condition. And then it goes on like that. And, he, and it goes on for a series of the most cliched language in the world. He makes new again. Cool. Yeah, Make it new. Stunning. That's a pound. <laughs> yes, it is. Absolutely. <laughs> We're only going to quote old dead white guys. Two white. This is what people really want, Park, is two white guys quoting <laughs> two old dead white guys. Yikes. Okay. <laughs> so let me, um, let me, let, I want to read an essay that Park shared with me that I think is pretty cool. We're calling it Shoes. Now we can get into do we like titles just because that's the topic of the essay, or at least that's the one that I threw on there. I want to read it and then I'm going to just kick it to you, Park, to give us some you know, bullet points. What, do you, what are some things that you really love about this essay? And everyone, hang out to the end. We'll give you a little link to where you can, or we'll you know, let you know how you can get these essays if you want to look at them later. So I'm going to read this one. Black stilettos, red flats, bright sandals, slouch boots, shoes on the metro, a pair of white sneakers with mud and green specks on their sides, the sweat of a young boy. A pair of faded brogues, carefully polished and shining in a dullish brown. The caramel edges speak of years. The punctuality of middle age. A pair of peep-toe pumps, a style in fashion last spring. Fidgeting heels barely awake from their hibernation in the closet. The clumsiness of a rusty girlhood. It's such a queer exhibition. No tickets or security guards open seven days a week, including holidays. Each day, a new set of moving sculptures, beckoning for one's approach, asking for nothing but an observant eye, with texture, color, and sometimes a few decorations they've picked up along the way. They compose stories of lives and culture. Yet many still rush past this kingdom of silence. I, it seems, am the lone spectator. I marvel at how much shoes tell me. I thrill at how much more they hold back. I'm actually going to pause there for a second, Park, because one, I'm going to share my screen so that folks can read along with me if they're more visual. But I'd love for you to just, would you say a couple words about the opening? Just your thoughts on that? So you can, you could see this as a movie. I mean, if you were filming, you would just see these shoes in close up and hear the narration going on. Right. And it's so particular and it also adds a bit of internal assessment you know the the kid is playing you know you have the young guy with the sneakers on right and you know he that she she captures that in one the sweat of a young boy right the punctuality of middle age the clumsiness of rusty girlhood that she's using these images and then taking them and sort of attaching a label to them right and then we're going into well what's going on here and then it's like we're stepping back and the russians call it ostranyenyi which is making strange mm -hmm. that what you're doing is things we normally see because we see them every day. We don't see them. Right. And now there's a spotlight and yeah. she said her way of doing this is to say it's a museum. Right. And it's this wonderful museum that I visit every yeah. day. And that's so captivating. To me. I agree. And there's, there's, so there's so many visual, there's like these images, boom, 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 boom. And then as she continues, I'm going to read this next part. Through, through shoes, people try to tell others a little about themselves. The blades of grass from a picnic at the park, the glamorous appearance stolen from a fashion magazine, the smell of ozone and the splashing sprint from the shower. Yet the shoes masters have their faces buried in books or smartphone screens, curling into their own worlds. Most humans are like this. While we yearn for connections, we are so reluctant to reach out. As shoes move and halt, come aboard and get off, I am swept away by all those other worlds. I feel the surging emotions held back by carefully built walls. From past remorse, the striving present to future possibilities, the trapped souls, every one of them stare across at me, standing on tiptoes, timid and mute. Here on the Metro, mere inches apart, we seem hopelessly far from each other. Men and women, father and daughter, young and old, we are bound inside our shoes, inside ourselves by fear, a fear of being misunderstood or a self-consciousness of being judged. 
I want to tell the whole world that it's not shameful to be easily embarrassed, to have too tender a heart, to wear socks with flip-flops. It's never shameful to be different. I want to call everyone out from behind the walls and have them proudly put themselves on display, humans, instead of shoes. But people hesitate to take risks. They cower under this small piece of garment and console themselves. I'm satisfied. Is there not a way each of us can acknowledge our weaknesses? Can I assure them we're all imperfect? Can I, can we help each other actively reach out and build these connections? Side note, we're getting some more of her values here. I seek my answer in words. In a scene in The Book Thief, a young German girl reads to her neighbors in a damp, crowded basement while bombs explode overhead. She reads for hours, long after the raid was over, and those listening sit with newfound strength. Words generate resonance. And I'm just going to ask folks on the side, can you guess what this student wants to do? Words empower both the utterer and the listener. Words push the mom to take off her worn out flats, put on her favorite heels, and boldly announce to her family, I'm not only a mom, but a woman. Imagination makes the pains in life endurable in the mundane world ever so lovely. I yearn to improve my relationship with words, delicately picking out adjectives, carefully constructing sentences, trying out different voices. I attempt to help people understand each other's timidity and open up another value. After all, we're just a humble and lonely species in a vast universe searching for company. That's great. That's the part that you decide to tweet out, right? <laughs> I hope the day will come when people replace that queer exhibition with one of the spoken word, conversation instead of converse, subtle views instead of Jimmy Choo's. See what she's doing there? Until then, I'll be the watcher with pen and paper telling their stories. What do you love about it? What makes this personal statement great, Park? I mean, there's sort of everything. I mean, it, there are poetic moments that um, those punning words at the end of the converse and then the Jimmy Choo's and then the, the other words that they nearly rhyme with. Mm -hmm. And you're getting pretty profound thoughts coming through here, but it's done with a subtlety and sophistication that is it's a very high level of writing it and is. people are sometimes surprised this is not an english speaker yeah english is not her first language yeah. but i mean she had 15 60 sat so it yeah. couldn't be but so bad but and, um and what do you say to students who read that and they go well i can't do something like that like what are the takeaways what are the lessons that even if the student can't come up with that perfect poetic phrase, even though I hold to be true that students, you know, that we are all poets at heart and that somebody could come up with something kind of interesting. What, what can students take from that and learn uh, in terms of what that student is doing? So you mentioned images at the start. What are some of the other things that you feel like that student's doing that they could, students could learn from? Well, I just tell people, we all have great stories. Mm -hmm. We just don't know they're great stories. Right. You know, I think the first time I talked to her about this, she's like, the Metro? <laughs> really? That's so nondescript. Mm -hmm. And I, I, you know, I just said, do a brain dump. You know, tell me about it. And all of a sudden, it just caught her and said, wow, yeah, I'm liking this. Mm -hmm. And you can feel that. You can feel the emotion, Aliveness. genuine emotion here. And I'm sure there are people that can BS it, but this mm -hmm. is, this is to me what a great essay can be. This is 650 words and we've traveled a long way, both, you know, from one station to another. And I do think of Ezra Pounds in a station, in a station of the Metro you know, um, which is one of the most famous poems in English, where you get petals on a wet black bough. I mean, it's that level of seeing that makes me see, God, she's going to be great no matter what she writes about. You right. know, she's going to bring a level of sophistication and technique that is going to benefit the other students, yeah. the community she's in. Yeah. So that's why I, you know, I don't want to scare people because this is, a, you know, the degree of difficulty on this one's pretty darn high. Yeah. This is triple axle territory. Exactly. And, you know, that's, it doesn't have to be at that level, but yeah. 
But if we're talking about what makes them great, yeah, if we're talking about what makes them great, let's start with the great one. (laughs) Right. And that's, I sometimes get that critique is, you know, Ethan, the essays you share are so awesome. And I'm like, well, first of all, I'm combing through hundreds, if not thousands of essays and going, these are my favorites. And these are the ones I'm presenting because I think we learn a lot from them. (laughs) And so, you know, I said, we could go over crappy essays, but you know, you've read crappy essays, you know, in fact, we've probably both written some crappy essays, right? So I tell, you know, I tell students that. So that's anyway, speaking to, if folks are looking at this going like, well, that seems like that triple axle, because it seems like in terms of the level of craft, this is like, this is about as good as it gets in terms of, you know, what, what, what we, what we see on these. I'm, I'm with you. It's, it's, it is triple axle level. We're get, they're getting into quadruple axles now, it seems. Um, so let me, I wanna, I wanna go and, and share one. Um, actually, let me, let me say, uh, just to speak to the thing that I asked you, which is like, what are some essays that I've loved and some, um, some different ones that have stayed with me. Um, I, some of the ones that have stood out for me like the last, in the, in, like over the last couple of years have been the topics that were a little bit more surprising. Like a student that I met last year worked on medieval blacksmithing was his topic and you know he walked in with that he's like you know that was on his i have students do this 21 details exercise and one of his 21 details is like he's been doing medieval blacksmithing for the last two years and i said what tell me tell me more because that's i tell students that's immediately more interesting than a, than another golf essay right and like you don't even have to write a good medieval blacksmithing essay to stand out <laughs> so that one has stood out and you know other students have written on these written on these uncommon topics beatboxing and you know strange things that they do or strange habits but what i tell students is that you don't have to do something it could be as simple as shoes on the metro but if you do do that you better do some uncommon so if it's a common topic like shoes because anybody could write a shoes essay ostensibly you better have some uncommon connections and use some uncommon language as you just saw in the essay before. So, you know, and I think those are kind of like, or there's like a reciprocal relationship. The more uncommon the topic, medieval blacksmithing, the more common the connections. You can talk about discipline, hard work and perseverance a little bit because you've got such a weird topic. But I wanna share an essay that's a little bit different in feel from the one that Park just shared. And um, this is, this is, what I would call like an identity essay. So sometimes students will choose like one way that they identify. So a particular community that they connect with or or the culture that they identify with. And some students will take a more, uh, I call it a montage approach where they'll talk about several different ways that they identify. And so here's an example of this. This is not, again, not the title of this essay, but I call it the, this is me essay. Let me read this to you. I am Mexican. The sound of frying empanadas and the smell of burning peppers. My mother calling me mi vida and my relatives kissing my cheek, running but never hiding from the dreaded chancla and always responding with muy bien y tú? Childhood vacations to Puebla and Cancun, swimming in the ocean and playing in the sand, feeling the need to be good at cross country, feeling the need to be able to endure spicy. Those are all me. I'm Chinese. The utter preference for using chopsticks in every scenario and the unhealthy craving for rice with every meal. The sharing of every dish placed on the center of turntable. Hot pot for celebration and tea eggs, of all things, as a favorite dish. My father's musical Cantonese conversations with my grandparents and their constant inquiry asking, how's school? Being named after the dragon for strength and living for three years in Shanghai. The constant pressure to get good grades, my father's desire for me to become a doctor, and the never-ending, how are you so bad at math? You're Asian. Those are all me. Notice, I'll just speak on this for a second. Notice the different, it's almost like we're getting a uh, sort of, you mentioned commercial, I think of these as little mini highlight reels and there's just a series of snapshots for these different identities. Those are all me. I'm American, a citizen with the freedom to vote, the freedom to speak my mind and the representation by all the cultures and countries of the world. Shopping sprees at Target and a constant diet of fast foods, full acceptance of the consumer society and a rather unhealthy addiction to social media and technology going to football games on Friday nights and watching Netflix on Saturday nights, always watching my weight, always looking at others, always wishing, always wanting for more. Those are all me. I'm Catholic. Sunday mornings, always spent at church. The private Catholic middle and high schools, each with masses for special occasions, baptism, Eucharist and confirmation, praying before each meal and saying, go away in the name of Jesus to nighttime horrors. Theology classes, and realizing there's so much more to religion than faith, having something to believe in, questioning what you believe in. 
turning to God when I see the horrors in the world and getting no response. Those are all me. I'm homosexual, an unusual obsession with fashion and clothing, watching Game of Thrones, not for Daenerys or Circe, but for Jon Snow and Jaime, seeing Love, Simon for the first time and crying at least five times, always conscious, always thinking before talking, going to an all boys school, dealing with gay being the go-to expression for displeasure, being called a faggot when I act gay, fear of my parents finding out. Those are all me. I am Jonathan K. Lu Eng. K. Lung Eng. I love reading and am addicted to fan fiction. I have three siblings and love my two dogs more than anything in the world. I can't eat spicy food and I have the biggest sweet tooth. I play League of Legends and soccer. I'm a Marvel geek and theater nerd. My friends call me Jenga. My teammates call me Jeng. My teachers call me Mr. Eng. I am Mexican. I'm Chinese. I'm American. I am Catholic. I am gay. I am all of this and more. And most of all, I am me. My identity is not a singular identity, but a conglomeration of experiences, beliefs, and origins. This is my identity. You haven't read this essay, so I just want to know, Park, what, what is your first reaction to this when you hear it? Well, it goes back to, you know, we are, we're our own crowd, meaning there are lots of people inside all of us. Mm -hmm. And this captures that so beautifully. And it's, it's simple, but it's simple in the way great art is simple. Yeah. Like this is, there's a lot of high rhetorical structure. You know, you have these repetitions of I am, I am. It's almost biblical in that <laughs> way. Yeah. And it's, so it's, it's taking some of the greatest rhetorical tools mm -hmm. and implementing them, but they're not big and fancy. Mm -hmm. They, they work at a level of, you know, of this one person. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Walt Whitman says we all contain multitudes. Yeah. And you can't get a better student essay showing that right. <laughs> in many it, ways. So yeah. I, it, it's just this wonderful evocation. And again, you feel the energy. Mm -hmm. The energy is there. The, you know, it's another guy you say, I can't wait to have this guy on our campus. You know, he is going to be great. Oh, my yeah. God. So that's that's what stands out to me. I want to say a couple more things about this essay, but I want to ask you in your all your years reading, did you have that in the back of your mind? Like, do I do I like this student? You know, or are we going to some version of it? Like, what was your version of it in terms because you are, you know, as as you know, or you were as an admissions officer trying to go, who are these humans that we're actually inviting? Is likability an important thing? I don't know if it's likability, but the, I mean, I have these things called essay tests and I just post the essays. I, I, I ask people to rate them, but I don't, I don't give my two cents worth. And, but the last question I always ask is, is this someone you'd want as your roommate? Right. And, you know, I, some people might not, but you sure know what you're getting. Yeah. But I would love this guy as a roommate. Me too. I, mean, I, I would just, so, you know, it, it's a social environment yeah. where we shouldn't be looking for people just like us. That's mm -hmm. what, when people say, you know, the right fit for a college is a right fit meaning everyone's a clone of everyone else no i've never met any guy like this and i i am fascinated i'd love to hang out with him yeah i feel that way too some of the when i think about what is it about this essay that's making that's drawing and what can students learn from as they as i look at this a, a few things one is like you can actually, I do what I call a value scan with students where I go through an essay and I go, what values are we getting? So let's start with this first paragraph. You know, he's got people that probably don't know what a chancla is. That's like a slipper, but you get sense of humor uh, at the start. You also get sense of humor when he talks about, you know, target uh, and there's some vulnerability later. Um, there's also that a really great value of vulnerability, which we get a few parts in, in this essay. There's also culture and family are really huge values that are coming through to me as I look at this. There's also, you know, I mean, so here's the vulnerability, always watching my weight, always looking at others, always wishing, always wanting for more. 
oh, to end the paragraph there is just like, um, and then there's this more vulnerability and, and, and the ability, one of the things I love to see with student from students is like the ability to sit with complexity and not to feel like they have to resolve it. Right. So having something to believe in questioning what you believe in turning to God, when I see the horrors in the world and getting no response, like these opposites are unresolved contradictions in the student. And I think are a great way of saying, here is somebody who's willing, this is why I would be, I think I would feel safe with this person is that I have my own unresolved contradictions, but I would know that if I spoke about these, that he might say, yeah, me too. You know, I'm gonna um, stop sharing my screen now just to come back. So, I mean, there's so much, there's so many like little moments of insight. There's moments of where he says, you know, this sort of self-consciousness around coming out. And this is a student who debated, you know, did he want to even put the the name in the essay? And then ultimately when I asked him to share it, he's like, yes, I'm, I'm okay putting my name in the essay. Um, but yeah, in, in terms of like, it, this is like, I have a feeling that students will read this and go, can I do that? You know, and my, what I would say to students is like, find your own way in, like, don't copy this exact structure, but find your own way to show different sides of you. And one way that students can do this is doing what I call the, the islands of personality exercise. So this comes from the movie Inside Out, where you can think about what are some of your core values or the different sides of you. So, you know, I, Ethan, have like teacher island. You know, I've also got dad island. I've also got game, you know, love to like just hang out and play games island. I've also got basketball island, right? So all these different sides of me are the multitudes. What are your different multitudes? What are your versions of these? And how could you use, how could you bring forth in your essay important values to demonstrate why these sides of you are so meaningful and what they're going to contribute to a college campus. So anyway, that's a, that's, I love that essay and I love that. I, I love that he was willing to let, allow me to share it. How, here's a question that sometimes students ask. And I think that you're, I mean, I know you're well equipped to answer it because I've, I've read stuff you've written on this before, but when folks ask, how important is the college essay? What do you say? Well, the way I've been explaining it more recently is there are two doors and, the, and I'm talking about, let's say 50 to 70 colleges in the U S door. Number one is called the numbers door. Yeah. Meaning if you don't have a certain set of numbers, unless you're hooked, meaning your dad gave a building, um, you know, you're a recruited athlete, legacy, whatever it is, you better have the numbers they're looking for. Now, this year they're saying test optional. Test optional doesn't mean you automatically don't submit your test scores. Mm -hmm. Because the truth is, unless you are a special, <laughs> they're going to be looking for big test scores. In fact, schools that go test optional, their SAT averages go up because they're mm -hmm. low testers that they want. Don't submit them. So if you look at the realistic, you know, top 10 percent GPA, number of APs, test scores, whatever, you, and you're hoping to get into a top 50, 75, you've got to you've got to have some of that strength. Otherwise, an essay is almost never going to outweigh that. It just so it's isn't. not going to, a C student isn't going to write, write their way into Harvard with the best essay ever. Yeah, no matter right. what. I mean, right. pretty much. Right. And so, yet, so when does it matter? So it's, that's the thing. There, there are hundreds of thousands of good students all over the world. Mm -hmm. You know, every school has a top 10%. Right. And but most people who are 17 tend to have fairly similar attributes. They've taken certain kinds of courses, certain kinds of grades, certain kinds of activities the school offers. Most of them do some kind of service. So then you're saying, well, what else? And that could be recommended. It's all, it comes down to words. What do the teachers say? What does your counselor say? What do you say? And you know, when it goes into a committee, when a group of people are getting pitched to, it's like someone is pitching a product, just happens to be a student. Mm -hmm. And there are a bunch of people sitting there and they're like, OK, here's here's the guy that contains multitudes. I mean, he's Catholic and he's Mexican and he's Chinese and he's 
gay and he's all of this and he captures that all and you could just feel his energy and they do a you know a brief summary of it and then they say okay how many say yes that many say yes how many say no how many people say wait list so in that case it's really important but you you don't get to that point unless there are some other things that got you there right right so and i and i hear two sides to this and you you've spoken about the one side of it which is the it's not gonna actually i'm trying to recap so it's not going to be the be all end all if you don't have these other things for these top schools which when i hear i think great for those students who are listening and going okay then what do i do my advice and i think park's advice is to expand your college list so don't be so overly obsessed with you know the quote unquote top schools according to whatever us news and world report thinks but this is a great time because we're you know still early in the in the year to go ahead and expand your college list and uh, i'll i'll share with students a resource on how to do that and how to make sure that you're actually applying to schools that are that are in range for that you can you know have a chance at I'm also hearing that, you know, that even though actually, it's, it's, so just to cap, recap the second part, we want to make sure that you're giving students like ammo or giving uh, rather admissions officers ammo when they're trying to fight for you, because there could be somebody who really falls in love with you and give them give them some stuff that they can go into that committee meeting and say, but look at this and look at this and look at this. Absolutely. Were there ever times w when you saw students, Park, who were sort of on the who were close where essays did make a difference? In other words, oh, they absolutely. Yeah. So it's, you know, one of the things I've heard you talk about before is like, if students are pretty similar in terms of grades and test scores, yeah, you know, colleges are looking to these other metrics, right? I mean, it's hard to say what's going to happen now because every college is hitting budget cuts. In some right. cases, millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars. So they're not going to be um hiring more people and yet they're going test optional how is that going to work right and i don't know how that's going to work that's a great question <laughs> let me ask the question that folks are going to be wondering about anyway what is your take so far on the the question about coronavirus i mean so just to recap for folks there is now a section in the common app there will be this year that has 250 words how did you spend your pandemic what is what do you say to folks students who are wondering should i shouldn't i write about the uh, the coronavirus for my say my personal statement well just one side note i don't know if it's me because i have a weird computer but your screen is frozen ah good to uh, know thank you <laughs> can you hear me okay <laughs> still oh yeah perfect okay. perfect audio just not a video thank you uh, um i mean it's it's like anytime you give whatever 20 30 50 a million people the same essay topic it's not going to go off the deep end in terms of someone writing a story unless unfortunately more than fortunately it has a direct impact on your life right you know if you've lost a family member if you've lost or whatever if you've gone and done a whole lot of service work as i know some people have in low-income areas you know going to food banks helping people that says something about your commitment you know and i but you also have to be careful because you know it's dangerous you know you shouldn't do it because it's going to look good on an application you should do it because you really want to do it uh let me talk a little bit more about trying to avoid a template when you are writing your essay because when you use a template you're going to be a generic so there you are you were gone so i was, I was gone thanks for thanks for holding it down, <laughs> holding down the door for me. um so i missed just the last part of what you said but i'm sure it was awesome <laughs> and no i i, I just said it's going to be a template to a large yeah. degree. It is, you know, we've all experienced social distancing. We've all experienced not being able to go places. Right. You know, students have, for the most part, experienced they can't go to school. So just saying that is useful because that's your experience, but that isn't going to be, oh my God, we're going to take this student because they they had to overcome these things because that's called living in the world today. Right. Being human 
in the pandemic. So let's let's talk practically about what can students do to get started. So that's the start of the summer. They're trying to figure out, you know, where do they begin? Give us, you know, give us a couple tips for how students can get started. What can they do? So I'm pretty basic. Is read the questions. <laughs> you know, you can go on the common application. There's seven different prompts, and I always tell students, okay go through and get rid of some they're just some you have no interest in fine good you know because the last one is write about anything you want so you always have one right but is there something that speaks to you and then let's talk about that you know right. why is this one speaking to you so i you know i'm I'm just sort of like, let's let's narrow this down a little, not a lot. And then I talk to people and I, I, I'm feeling the energy. I can just, I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think I'm wrong that much among this. When someone starts to talk about something and you see they lean in, you know, and their mm -hmm. eyes go up and you, you're like, okay, they're into this. Mm -hmm. You know, if they're going like, not so much. <laughs> so, you know, body language, that's why visuals are sometimes good when working with people. And in particular, in terms of getting started, um, you know, reading the questions, I think, is super awesome. I've, there are a couple exercises, and I'll, we, I can share these with folks in the follow-up. What what what's one of your favorite brainstorming exercises? Um, I'll just say when I, when I hear something or see something or even read something they've written, I'll just say, I want you to do a brain dump. Don't worry about sentence structure. This is not an essay. It's nothing. It is who, what, when, where, why, and how mm -hmm. I want to see it. I want to hear it. I want to touch it. I want to smell it. I want to taste it. Mm -hmm. And that's all you have to do. Mm -hmm. and get that back to me. Yeah. Now that if nothing else, it's a good exercise for writing, whether that becomes an essay, who knows, but it's a, it's a good method for any writer learning how to write. Yeah. Some of the exercises, and again, I'll follow up with this that I love are similar to a brain dump, but it's this one that I mentioned called 21 details where you just write down 21 random facts about yourself. And students would be surprised at how the 17th or 18th detail, it might seem kind of random, but there's some little gem in there oftentimes that pops out. The other one is this essence objects exercise that I mentioned that involves finding particular objects and uh, associating meaning with them. So for me, an essence object might be like this friendship bracelet that I'm wearing that my wife gave me that represents my connection with my best friend and the cool ritual of like every year she makes a new bracelet for me and it wears off and we you know remake, are able to remake our connection, which is kind of a cool, um, you know, I, I think it's a cool metaphor. Um, we're going to open it up just in two minutes, by the way, for um, you saw Ethan Sawyer just joined the room. That's that's Devin logging on on my laptop. With, uh, he's going to do Q and A, uh, get get some questions going. So we're going to open up the chat box in just a second so that folks can ask questions. Um, th th there's another thing that I'll say to students, and I mentioned this already, but I think it's really important for students to spend this time developing their list because Park mentioned you know, look at the questions. You're not gonna know, you'll know the common app questions, but you're not gonna know the supplemental essay questions officially, which is to say those additional essays that each school is, you know, not every school, but many schools ask for. You're not gonna know those officially until August, but you can look at past essays and kind of see, you can learn something about the school. For example, the, the famous example would be University of Chicago. You Google University of Chicago supplemental essay questions, and you'll see their, you know, their library of past essay questions. And usually, and they'll probably do this again this year, I can't see that they would change it, but you can pick any of those questions and go back and use one of the past U Chicago essay questions if that's a school that you're interested in. But some schools are gonna ask about why you wanna attend this school, the why us essay, and making sure that you've done your research and really have an understanding of what that school is looking for. And again, there's, you know, I'm going to send out my college application hub because I've got a whole guide and Park has written about this too on how to write those why us essays. But, you know, I really encourage students to think about, you know, getting started over the summer as I'm sure you do. Before we kick it over to q and A, I I want to, um, are we almost, Deb, are we good on Q&A? Will you um, bring that over to me so that I can read the, the questions? 
Oh yeah, will you you'll grab and put them on the dock? Okay, cool. We've had, it's a good thing I had a second laptop here uh, for this. So um, uh, you, you've opened up the chat. Okay, Devin, he just opened up the chat, so folks can. Oh, great, Andrew's got a question. Our first question, you can. I'll give you this one, Park. What are some overdone topics that we should not write about? See, that's. I mean, just there's an off. easy that's answer. Not. There's an easy answer to that, but it isn't necessarily the right answer. Like people say in admission, never write about the death of a grandfather or never write about your service trip to some third world country. Right. And, you know, I had a kid who he did both of those in his essays and he just graduated from Princeton. <laughs> so, um, and it's, sorry to cut you off, but it's connected to another question that someone else asked. Jack asked, what's the most difficult topic to write about? These are some of the most difficult topics to write about. Dead family members, mission trips, and yet when you write about those well, it can potentially turn out well. So sorry to cut you right. off. Right, the degree of difficulty is very high. If you're exactly. stepping into that, you better be damn good. You because they, they're reading hundreds or thousands of them. Right. Um, and most of us, you know, we're just, <laughs> we we reach out and capture words that are floating around and that's not what a good essay does yeah the someone's asking what's what's your opinion on writing an essay about a particular person i'm assuming that this the person means a person who is not you how to make that first of all do you ever advise that park and because i don't i tell my tell students to not do that but how do you do it well how do you write well about a person if you're writing your essay ostensibly about someone else so I had this kid who he kept writing about his father and I'm like, they're not going to accept your father. He's right. already done what he's done. You're taking well over half the essay talking about someone that is not you. Yeah. And so you can mention him, but he's right. not, he's not the starring character. So you yeah. got to be careful of that. So that's that's great advice. And you know, what I'll tell students is like talk about them as little as possible, only in so much as it comes back to you, your values, what you're bringing to the campus. Yeah. Our, Lucy asks, are supplements as important as the personal statements? And this is an answer you will get tens of thousands of times. It depends. Mm -hmm. Like if you're the best at something, and I mean best at something, then that's a game changer. You know, whether it's art or service or leadership or something else, that's gonna be the main reason you're getting in. Yeah, and Lucy, I'll add to that, that I think that when, for schools that track demonstrated interest, which is to say, many schools, but schools that care, uh, for, for more on this, Google demonstrated interest college essay guy, and then you'll find a whole take on this, but, uh, or demonstrated interest park move. Um, and you'll find that for these schools that really want to know um, that, 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 that track demonstrations, which is to say, if they accept you, will you, are you likely to accept them back? The why us essay can matter more for those schools. And so I would say that those supplements can matter more. And I would say for schools that ask for some weird answers like Chicago, I think those, I think those essays really matter. And the, the students that I've seen who get into Chicago really crush it on the essays in most, most situations. Well, the shoes on the Metro, that was a Chicago kid. Cool. Um, Valerie, this is an easy one, so I'll take this one. Do we have to write the Common App essay on our interested major? No, Valerie, certainly not. You can write about all kinds of things. So you'll notice that the student that Essays of Park shared, there was a little thing about, you know, the student is interested in writing, but the This Is Me essay, which was great, um, didn't mention any kind of major at all. Um, Nicolette's asking, Ooh, a question about the UCs. I'll take this one too. Sorry, I'm like hogging all the questions now. <laughs> the UCs, do these tips transfer to PIQs? There's one side questions for the UCs. Nicolette, the, uh, not sort of, like, but not as much because the universal in the particular, the poetry is less important uh, for, the, for the UC personal side questions. They're looking more for information than poetry. So Google college essay guy, UC personal insight questions, and you'll see that there's a little guide that's on the 14 points of comprehensive review which is to say, these are the 14 things that the UCs are looking for. How can you use the personal insight questions to, to basically check those boxes? Um, let's see. Can I just, uh, I, I feel I need to add, there's another essay which I hope you will put out there, the other one I sent to you to look at, 
we haven't really gotten into, well, what if I'm a STEM guy or woman? Um, can I write about that? Is STEM boring? You know, what? And the one I have is scary because the guy is just a genius. He really is. I, I don't use that word lightly, but he is. But he explains really complicated stuff simply. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you if you are good and that's what you're pursuing, you know, engineering or whatever else, you can write a great essay or a great STEM essay. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be poetic. Mm -hmm. It has to be clear, mm -hmm. concise, correct. And that's what they're looking for. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Claire asked, what are recommendations for students whose writing is less sophisticated than the ones presented? And I would say, you know, just what you said, Park, that it needs to be clear. That's probably the most important thing. And even when I, I would look at even the This Is Me essay, and I wouldn't say that the writing is necessarily sophisticated, although I could certainly make that argument as well. But I think that it's mostly clear and it's choosing interesting images and specific examples. And so my advice is mirrors a lot what you say, Park, is like the specific, the universal in particular, like find, choose, it's the careful choice of those details that really make things pop. Someone asked, I know you get this one a lot, but what is your take on mental health issues, writing about mental health issues and personal statements? So in this day and age when schools are cutting back <laughs> through no choice budget stuff, if they see you're going to cost a lot of money potentially, meaning you're going to need a lot of Support. Additional support. This yeah. is just reality. I'm not, you know, I don't, I don't agree with it. But that's, you know, the ability to pay is going to be more important than ever, yeah. Yeah. unfortunately. And so are potential issues that are going to cost the schools lots of money. And of course, they can't say that because it's against the law. Sure. But <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. So, and what I'm to read between the lines a little bit, what I'm hearing from you and my advice on this is is if there if there are other things that you can write about that you have that can show awesome parts of you great explore those i don't want students to feel like they're denying some essential part of who they are so what i'll say is look to the additional information section and have a conversation with your counselor is the counselor potentially addressing that in their letter if you have a relationship with your counselor or is this something that could be addressed in a paragraph in your additional information you know i went through whatever it was here was what I did about it. Here are the adaptations I made, and here's what I learned from the experience in a very straightforward, factual way. And you can almost like bullet point that and go, here are the bullet points, and then take away the bullet points, and it creates a short paragraph. Does that tell the whole story? I, I just, I worry that students, if they, and sometimes I think students are even worried about this, that this thing will define them. And if, it, if you use 650 words and most of it is about the challenge itself, then I think you do run that risk. So what other things do you have to write about? You contain multitudes, you know, like Whitman said. What else have you got? And could that be covered somewhere else? That's kind of how I feel, by the way, about the coronavirus thing. It's like, you've got so many stories you could tell. It doesn't need to dominate, especially if you've got a section that you can place that in. Sometimes students feel like they have to put everything in their personal statement, right? When they've got um, others. Uh, let's see, uh, ba -dum -bum -bum. lots of questions. I'm trying to figure out which one to pick. Um, what are some ways, oof, some of these are gonna be too tough to answer in like the couple minutes that we have left. Um, but so how's so, it? Well, you've, we've already answered that one. Can we write about inspirational figure? What tips do you have for people who aren't? Oh, okay. How about this one? What tips do you have for students who aren't native English speakers? And another student asked, what, do you, what tips would you give for international students? Any thoughts on that? Well, as I said, that, that student whose essay I used is an international student. So you can't assume <laughs> that some of those are not pretty sophisticated writers. I mean, they most people who are coming from outside the US are typically upper middle class, they've gone to good schools, they've received good education, and many times in English. Now, if you're not one of those, the expectations on the level of your writing are not gonna be the same. Mm -hmm. um, and you may be from a part of the world where they want more people. You know, if you're from China, you better be one of the best people in all of China if you want to get in the top 40 school. That's just the bottom line. Um, if you're from an area where very few students or you go to a UWC, United World College, where you're getting a scholarship to go to that high school, then they're not expecting you to have 
an amazingly sophisticated essay. They want it again. Clarity is more important than poetics. Yeah, this is this will be our last question, and it's it's comes back to the COVID coronavirus one. Someone was asking a clarifying question. Vidya asked, "So don't answer the pandemic question unless you have something really different." What what is your take on this? I mean, I have well, a, the I have common to... app says you got to. I mean, it's a two hundred and fifty word essay, and, and I think so, it'll be optional, right? Yeah, but, but what can we'll you? See. Why wouldn't when when they say optional, it isn't really optional for most people. <laughs> I mean, it is if you're you know going to be their superstar, whatever ballerina or football player or something. But for the normal of us. You need optional. It's like at the end of an. It's like at the end of this. When I ask, well, do you have any questions? If someone says no, I'm good. I'm like, you're done. I would yeah. never hire you. I would never. You know, you don't have one question seriously. Right. Yeah, my sense uh, to give my two cents on it is, I think that if students, it's it's as with everything, you know, we talk about this. Well, it depends, right? And I what. And I'm going to release a blog on this in a couple of weeks. I don't want to do it too soon because I don't want folks to think, yeah, the pandemic's over. I definitely don't think it's over. Um, but I, my sense is if you're going to write about it, putting it in that 250 words is a good thing to do. And there will be some students who are using a challenge structure, which is like I mentioned, what was the challenge you faced? What did you do about it? And what did you learn? And some students who really were able to make the most of it by doing lots of things. You can use what I call the montage structure, which is like, what are the different values? And because it's 250 words, maybe it's two or three values. Like maybe you connected more with your family. Great, well, what are the specific examples, you know, of how you did that and the details? You know, maybe for example, you started a project, or maybe you started to read more. What did you read? What did you gain from that? So you could pick two or three things that you got out of it. I think that if students don't write about it, they've maybe left a little bit of an opportunity on the table. Um, so my sense, Park is saying, yes, it's not optional. I'm saying, yeah, probably write about it. But I think for some students, they just will say, I got nothing. I played video games the whole time. It was great, but I don't have, I don't think it's going to make a great essay. And for those students, I'd say, okay, maybe, <laughs> maybe not. But um, before we log off, I want to just say thanks again um, for, you know, for jamming with me. I love talking to you and talking about this yeah. stuff. Well, this and was great fun. Yeah, and for folks who are interested, um, you know, we'll send you Parks Info. You can read more about him. He works for students. I've got a course coming up uh, this summer that's a pay what you can course that will walk you through all these things, including how do you actually write about the coronavirus. Um, I'll follow up via email with more information on that for everybody. And um, thanks, thanks to everybody for spending this time with us. And yeah, um, really. yeah have, an, have an amazing summer. And some of you I'll see on the course and Park, Let's let's jam next week. Let's just hang out. How about that? That's a great idea. We're going to do a socially distanced Zoom hangout, by the way, just for everybody. I'm not saying I'm going to go with Park's house. Yeah, we're on different ends of the country. So we are indeed. We Again, that. thanks, Park, for your time. I appreciate you so right. much. Well, thanks, Ethan. Have a good one. All right. You too. Bye -bye.